Welcome to a season of rewards. Learning About Dogs is launching a multi-part series of podcasts focusing on living a reward-centered life with our dogs. Hi there, Sue McGuire here, the producer of Learning About Dogs, the podcast featuring Kay Lawrence. The seed of this series began months ago when Kay and a few of her fellow dog nerds embarked on a master's level course on instructional design. It was a challenging and fascinating journey that evolved into self-directed learning courses. That adventure, coupled with Kay's usual tact of rethinking and challenging previously held notions surrounding dog training, are forcing us to really look at what the science is saying about reward systems. Reward Skills is a new course being offered by Learning About Dogs, and links to the course are in the episode notes. Take a listen. Reward Skills is a new course that you have developed and really worked on it quite a bit. Uh, this, a long time coming. I, I, you know, we used to call, we call them rewards now. We used to call them reinforcers. And where did this, uh, th- where did the nut of this come from? Mm, I, I mean, 20 years ago, we said, oh, you can't use the word reward because we didn't understand enough about what it meant on a biological level as opposed to common usage. You know, you give somebody a reward like a tip or um, a bonus at Christmas. And, and, you know, 20 years ago, that was considered what the reward is. We then had to work at explaining that we want um, to deliver reinforcers and it was up to the recipient to decide whether it's reinforcing or not. So if I was going to give somebody a tip for carrying my luggage, but that was less than they were expecting, you know, they're expecting, I don't know, 20 bucks or something, and I only gave them two, and they'd look at me, oh, the English woman, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would not be a reward. Even though I thought it was a reward, the person receiving it was much less than expected. They'd probably smile but not come anywhere near me again. So it was not serving as a reinforcer. So we spent how long trying to say, no, no, we use reinforcers, not rewards. Yeah. Like and that. then all the time, sort of like, you know, 15 years, there's all this research been going on. And they've discovered different reward systems. And they've called them reward systems, not reinforcement systems, because reinforcement and rewards are not quite the same thing. So... Um, learning to look at to me the value of rewards meant that the type of learner that we were building was one that was eager yes i like the scientific term attentiveness you know they were whoa what's coming next Mm -hmm. am i going to do this for that or am i going to do that for that and by having a look more at the reward systems we can pick out a lot more subtle details that have a long-term effect on how we're teaching the dogs you know and it it, it, going back and having a look at something that we've been familiar with for a long time and looking at it through another field's view of what we're doing brings more understanding so i was you know I, i love this term this landscape of rewards so if you look at a beautiful valley and oh gosh doesn't it look lovely you know real alpine type of valley then somebody goes and teaches you about geology and the ice age and how the valley's formed. Oh, you then look at the valley through different eyes. You see different things and you think, oh, that's a lovely waterfall and it's a hanging waterfall or whatever they call it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or there's a, a lump of, um, you know, a, a sort of at the bottom of the valley, there's a, a church built on a sort of the top of a hill. And then you go, oh, the terminal moraine, you know, where the... Um, glacier melted and left all the junk at the bottom so just by learning a different science about what we're looking at we tend to see different things you know it's almost like you go around the outside the house and look back in through the window you don't see the same as if you're in the house looking out the window so looking at some of the science that's been floating around for quite a time now i think it's about time we bring this into our teaching and learning for us as well as the dogs we're learners and we're all driven by rewards as well Um, and seeing how it changes what we do so that's why we've gone back on reward skills and I certainly think it is skills we need skills to be able to use them thoughtfully Hmm. 
use them effectively, make the most of them. But isn't there a danger of getting in, uh, for lack of a better term, too sciencey as opposed to, I mean, or is that a necessary part? Go into the other sciences. When are we not? I mean, science is just that systematic, um, oh, what's that beautiful quiz? The systematic, um, it's a way of trying to understand what's happening. Well, what we're doing, just trying to understand what's happening is science. Mm -hmm. You know, so would I prefer to go down this avenue that is what they're now calling the neurobiology, or would I rather go down the avenue of the quadrants? Uh -huh. Well, you know, both of those are sciences that can send you screaming for the hills without any trouble. But science is there to, to give us a systematic understanding of what is actually happening. So if this is happening here, then that, you know, so it's more of a mindset rather than a chemistry set. Yes, I don't understand the chemistry and the physics. But if I want to walk a dog on a, a leash and not find myself chin down on the floor, I need to understand something about physics and levers and points of balance, the same as, a, a you know, a collar on a dog or a harness on a dog. It's about understanding points of balance. Do we need to understand the biology of what's happening in the brain when we're learning something? Gosh, how could we not? You know, and so much of the stuff that we talk about, you know, like getting a buzz from something. Well, what's the buzz? What is a buzz? Mm -hmm. Makes you feel good? Gives you that little tingle? Makes your stomach turn over once? What is that chemical that's making that happen? Mm -hmm. So do I want my dogs to have a bit of a buzz when they're training yeah so i need to go and find out why and how that happens wow so where did you go what did you where did this take you well we um so that the main sometimes it comes down to accessibility there's probably lots of research going on on this you know when you read some of these scientific papers you get through the abstract and you go yeah, no, I'm not going to understand this. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's going to have to translate it for me. And then you look at the references at the back end, and often there's more references than there is in the paper. And you go, mm, yeah, wow, this is somebody's life work to actually get all this material together. Um, I keep thinking of the Big Bang Theory, you know, and they try to produce their paper to go and get the Nobel Prize, and they have to check all their references. And, oh, somebody's already done it. It's not you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Um, Having a look at a paper and then going, oh, this is this is quite readable. I can understand this. That was motivation for me to want to work through this paper over and over again. And this is the um, Wolfram Schultz paper on the reward systems. Yes. Not going to get too scientific, yeah. but it's very readable. Not in dumbing down terms, but he just doesn't try and compress too much in in one go. And there's a lot of explanation and a lot of background stuff in there that just goes, yeah, that could be useful to understand that. So one of the things he looks at is classical conditioning and operant conditioning. Interesting, he always calls classical conditioning Pavlovian. Pavlovian. Yeah, he was really into that. Uh, yeah. Uh, which I don't know whether that's just a cultural thing in that business or not. I don't know. We just tend to use classical and operant or respondent and operant. Mm -hmm. Goodness me, it changes names enough times. And looks at... Um, a reward predicting stimulus. Oh, gosh, that still makes my hair stand up. A reward predicting stimulus. We call it a cue. Q. And I've always regarded a cue as an opportunity for reinforcement. Now I've got a new word for it, an RPS, a reward predicting stimulus. So when the dog hears the cue, sit down, oh, they go. That means I'm going to get some food. Oh, ooh, what have I got to do? I know. Park my butt on the floor. Oh, yes. So when they hear the cue or the reward predicting stimulus, they get a shot of a buzz. And that acts as the motivator to do the behavior because that reward predicting element of the cue tells them that something good's going to happen. Yeah. You know, so it, it, it's, it is a whole cycle. It goes around in a cycle that... The more we practice associating the cue, the behavior, the reward. Hey, we're going to chase this bit of food. Oh, we're going to travel to the kitchen and open the fridge and find you a sausage. Oh, yes. So when they hear that cue next time, they go, oh, something good's going to happen. What do I have to do? So the cue itself 
motivates the dog to do the behavior mm. yeah is yeah. that a big enough change you know oh the cues are command wow no 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 and that and that the right cue. there right there should change the view yes it's that's, that's it, that it, hanging valley there is no <laughs> way it could be a command it c there's no way it could be if you're looking at it yeah. as a stimulus yeah 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 so if i pick up the dog's lead and gets excited it's a reward predicting stimulus yes. leads the dog doesn't love the lead the dog just goes when that comes out something really cool is going to happen and i know i'm going to enjoy it oh my goodness oh what have i got to do oh yeah she wants to stand still so the lead motivates the dog. It, it prompts the dog to do the behavior that then gives them access to the rewards that they want. <gasps> you know, we, we're also looking at lots of different aspects. We've been looking at, um, so, you know, so educational aspects of how discrimination becomes more refined the more you learn. So... You know, looking at um, maybe in your situation, like when you take on a rescue dog, they can probably go, you're a person I don't know, and that's a person I do know, and I don't like that type of person, and I do like that type of person. Yes. Um, and as they discriminate more, they can tell the difference between the shoes you're wearing, whether they are going to go out for the day, or you're going to stay home for the day. You know, when you put the flip-flops on, you're not going for a walk or when you put those particular shoes on you're going off to work and that real honing down of that discrimination skills just brings to light how easy it is for dogs to learn how to be really really good dogs and how as humans we've probably let them down mm -hmm. so many times so many years sit good sit <laughs> <laughs> here food <laughs> yes, and then you slap your leg to make them come towards you, and you're going. You can see the dog sitting there going. Well, I wonder if I sit here for longer, she'll slap herself even more. Because <laughs> <laughs> yes. I would, I would be a white wicked dog. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I don't understand what you're talking about. Come here. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, how did you not get overwhelmed with looking at the neurophysiology of all of this? Well, I think you've got to go through it section by section. My particular, everyone learns in different ways. Sometimes you have to learn a bit, go away, a couple of weeks, come back later and go, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, that did work. Sometimes you have to experience it, you know, so different things, different. For me, I need to draw it out. And this is not like a mind map. I make a, an illustration of what this looks like. So, um, <laughs> so. Yes, this reward skill is rather rather loaded with diagrams and illustrations because that's how I actually work out what he's talking about. So, mm -hmm. you know, my reward is this delightful little pot of pinkness <laughs> that looks like... Um, yeah, um, a weird little balloon. Sort of like a, well, yeah. No, um, it's, it was supposed to be a, like a symbol that I could use and I can overload it onto videos later on so you can actually get that symbol or that colour come through and tell you... This is the point when the reward has gone. <gasps> yeah. And this is what the stimulus looks like. And I used a particular thing that looks like a snowflake for the stimulus because it could be something the dog sees, hears, smells, um, has experience of before. It's a multisensory yes. event. You know, we think the command is just what I say. Well, no, it's not. It's the way you nod your head as well. And it's the fact that I could already smell food. And it's the fact that we're sitting in the kitchen. You know, so it's never just a single or rarely, in fact, that becomes the hard part of training, is taking that stimulus, that reward predicting stimulus, down to something that's minimal and not multi multi layered in different senses. Yeah. When I when I was going through this, I really felt the sense an obligation to not be static in in things and mm -hmm. you know because we were talking about how you know the, the dogs are perceiving a landscape and then we are we're all about teaching relevant irrelevant and how much fun that is to to work that into your processes of you know not always teaching in the same place not always wearing the same yeah, thing yeah, yeah. Um, uh, i think probably one of the biggest things is rewards should not be fixed 
Uh No, 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 no. So, you know, what I found rewarding 10 years ago now, mm -hmm, really? (laughs) And you can see young people go, why on earth do they do that then? Well, that's because old people like that. That's rewarding (laughs) for old people. (laughs) And what might have been rewarding for your puppy at 16 weeks old will not be when he's 16 months old. Yes. Yep. So what was reward for them at 10 weeks old when they're 10 months old? I pretty much guarantee you it's not going to be because they've changed. Yes, there's other things in their systems that they will find rewarding. It's called sex. Um, So having a look at rewards as I'm going to give a treat to this, that and the other. What treats do you use? Well, I use a hot dog section or a piece of kibble or this, that and the other. Okay, so how do we know that's rewarding at this moment, at this time for this behavior? Well, because he likes them. Yeah. No, he liked them when he was hungry and 16 weeks old. He's now an 11 month old young male dog. And your hot dog is worth nothing. Yeah. Oh. Oh, but I've built up a condition to history. So? <laughs> yeah. So? No, it's worth nothing at all now. No, it's not what they're looking for. You know, and I, I discovered, most of most us discover this the hard way that if I take one of the Gordons out to go ranging across the fields and I say hey do you want a piece of chicken you know you don't want, do I want a piece of chicken what now <laughs> I'm hunting for live birds why would I want a piece of fluffy old chicken out your pocket that will get lost you know so having an understanding about the fact that rewards are constantly changing and we need to pin down at this moment at this time for doing this behavior this is the most valued reward we then become much more able to shape the dogs towards learning what we want them to learn. Mm-hmm. Now, this course later on, if you, in, in, it, it is absolutely fascinating when, when we, I, I don't want to give away too much just yet because I want people <laughs> to listen to the podcast. I want them to, to go through the process very say It absolutely changed my, my shift. Like, oh, pleasure, pleasure yes. is such yes. an integral yes. part of yes. all of this. When I see, you know, training videos that are going on that the dog is given a treat and you're going, well, he ain't getting much pleasure out of that, you know, and you see the dogs eating the treat out of habit. There's no orientation. There's no attentiveness to the treat coming. Do the behavior. Here's the treat. And it's almost pushed into the side of the dog's mouth. Yeah. You know, that's not a reward. That's not a reinforcer. That's just going through the same mechanic. Eat the treat. Eat the treat the treat and it's not the type of learners that i would want to be or to build you know it should be this totally different face of what is learning you know whether dogs are bright they're engaged Mm -hmm. and if they hear the mark or the click there should be an immediate orientation to you like oh wow what's going to happen i don't know what's going to happen shall we do this or shall we do that oh it's gonna be fun isn't it yeah you know me i'm gonna make it fun and even then, you know, I see people often playing with the top toy and I'm going, I'm not sure that this is pleasure for the dog. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, folk are training with us and they're going, oh, well, I was just tugging for this behavior and I give treats for that behavior. And I'm going, so why do you use tugging? Oh, well, because it's supposed to build drive. Yes. Yeah, and I go, but do you like tugging? No, no, not really. It makes my arms ache or my back ache or my neck ache or, oh, he gets so bitey when he's on the tug and I go then don't use it oh Mm -hmm. oh you know it's like it's the only way that I've known to use rewards that build motivation and drive no it's not it's just one game and it's a pretty what I call on the very very edge of rewards game it's a very extreme game and it's not suitable for everybody it's certainly not suitable for every dog and it's not suitable for every behavior (laughs) but it's become the culture to build drive yes Yes, and it's very short-lived. You know. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking. So, yeah, I was thinking about this whole pleasure thing. So, uh, after reading through all the the stuff that you sent me, and just reading all the papers, and just thinking about it, like where rewards sit in my life, and um, I made a vow to only do things that are pleasurable. So mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but I I struggle with uh, getting enough exercise in. You know, I I exercise yeah. a lot. And so I used to be a master swimmer and I said, why did I stop swimming? I find so much pleasure in it. And I said that I went, oh my God. So I've been back to swimming 
and I am loving it. I'm the Good. pleasure I get from it. And it just really struck me about, you know, how, how little we pay attention to the pleasure part of what our dogs are doing with mm-hmm. us. Yeah. It's like yeah. somebody has yeah. told us you yeah. have to do this. And I, I'm, if I spend the next 30 years of my life going, no, you don't have to do that. Um, yeah. Do yeah. things that are pleasurable. Yeah. And I, you know, in the course I use, every time you get a bit stuck about the word reward, use the word comfort. Yes. You know, so what's comfortable for one person is not comfortable for another. And that's socially comfortable. Yes. As well as psychologically comfortable. Yeah. No, I don't really like doing tugs. I, I find it a bit uncomfortable to have my dog lunge at me snarling mm-hmm. yeah okay so that's fine you know yes, absolutely. that's not very comfortable for me or some people will like a certain type of pillow or certain foods you know um and certain activities are not comfortable to do for certain people so there's a whole range of what you can enjoy and you know the one thing in the shorts paper you know the rewards are the center of life the whole point of living is to get rewards yeah and if they were the same as what you have when you're 20 years old as when you're 70 year old, why would we bother? Yeah. <laughs> the fact that these can rewards keep changing opens up new avenues of rewards all the time. And he describes learning as the gap between desire, I want that reward. Yes, I want to enjoy swimming. How am I going to be able to swim? The bit in the middle is learning. Mm-hmm. So learning is about securing the rewards you need to live and then securing the rewards that are better and getting to them faster mm. so where do you swim in the sea no i have friends oh. Oh, oh no i'm not a sea swimmer no i have a friend who has a lap pool and a friend of mine likes this wild water swimming oh is that in the ocean no no well lakes and rivers and oh yeah i mean i'll do that ponds I, basically and yeah. i'm like oh I don't my find, god i don't find pleasure in saltwater swimming i do find pleasure in freshwater swimming for sure oh right no 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 no, yeah, no. Yeah. once i've sunk my feet into that mud and crap at the bottom i'm like <laughs> no i'm done i'm out of here <laughs> <laughs> no 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 i'm quite happy with a good pool <laughs> and the nice thing about pools is that um i mean this is going to be told <laughs> not that you need to know this but People tend to not talk to you. <laughs> yes, that's true. Because yes. <laughs> your head's underwater. Yes. Mind uh, you, I, I did go for quite a while doing, um, you know, fitness training again, and I popped to our local school in the evenings. Was open to people to go swimming, uh-huh. and there was this group of ladies that used to breaststroke up and down the pool, uh-huh. about four abreast yeah, yeah, at yeah, the yeah, same yeah, speed, yeah. gossiping their bloody heads off. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And I would swim up against them, and they'd all have to go around me. And I'm going, they're still going on about that person. I think, oh, okay. yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. It's it's, but you know, some for some people, sports is the most uncomfortable thing they could do, and other people, it's an absolute source of pleasure. So, yeah. to say that rewards are this for this dog to do this behavior, it's very often just a convenience. Or we're just picking up the habit of what everybody else tells us is rewarding. And I'm like, no, no, no. You go and find out, as you said, what is rewarding for you and what is rewarding for your dog. And I think dogs are so accommodating, saying, if you want to do agility, I'm probably all right with that. But not every dog. You know, not every dog can do every sport or enjoy every game that you want to play. Some will enjoy it, some won't. And that is powerful right there. Yeah, to to yeah, to, yeah. to give people the the permission, which I is a terrible word to say, the permission to say, yeah. live the dog you want with, you know, live the life you want with your dog. Yeah, or go against the crowd, God. be out on the edge, say, no, I'm not going to do the same with everybody else. I'm surprised, you know, with this whole situation at the moment. Um, so probably 20 years ago, I would have thought the dogs have got to go for a walk. You know, the, you know, they're big ranging dogs. The Gordons and the Collies have got to go for a walk. Now, yeah, they're just as happy to hang around <laughs> at home and snooze and play hunt for the chicken in the garden. You know, dead chicken in the garden. Dead cooked chicken in the garden. Yes. Not the live chicken in the garden. Oh, yeah. You know, they have different, different games. <laughs> yeah. And they adapt. Do they look like they need to go for a walk? Not in the slightest. No. But I would have thought that was essential as a reward to keep them healthy 
you know, 20 years ago. Oh, the dog's got to go for a walk every day. And this is one of the things they'll often say about border collies. Oh, they need so much exercise. Mm. No, they no. don't. You know, life on a farm for a border collie is very seasonal. Sometimes they'll work for three weeks and they'll hardly get their heads down. And then they'll go for three months and spend their time sleeping on the hay and watching a few chickens and hanging out with the farmer in the tractor. You know, nothing much at all. Mm. So, again, it's seasonal. It's variable. It changes depending on how you feel. It changes on hormone relations. You know, so rewards are not fixed. They are dynamic. And every time we're training, you shouldn't just get them out and start poking food at the dog because it might not be a reward at this time. Ah, oh, so important. And how would you know? You know, do they look at you with anticipation and pleasure when you say, I'm going to start off with a reward? And I would now say you have to start every training session with the reward and you train out of the reward. You don't start with the behavior and then reward it because how do you know that reward is rewarding? It's so important. You start the other way around. Okay, I'm going to get this piece of food and I'm going to toss it over there. Oh, well, i got to go and get it. Yeah. yeah. Now what do I know? It's not rewarding. Hmm, don't want to. Either the food or having to get up and go over there and get it. <laughs> okay. Maybe <laughs> so one of my like... very, very older dogs who would have loved chasing anything collie he's 15 now and i've got to groom him and he doesn't like to be groomed he's never liked to be groomed but he's put up with it because but now he's a grumpy old man he goes i don't want to be groomed i tell you what if you just lie here in the sun and i put the food just by the end of your nose can i groom you oh, okay yeah that's cool <laughs> now that would never have been cool 10 years ago you with me would have gone oh, feed me to groom me i'm gonna i'm a man i don't do that sort of stuff but now yeah that's really cool He's really into being grown up <laughs> because that's reward. Yeah. Yeah, that's reward. Yeah. Oh. oh, I just think it's so freeing at, at the same time. It's so, yeah. yeah. You know, and if we have our dogs, to me and you and probably many of the people listening to us, you have a dog because you want to enjoy sharing your life with the dog. But we get so imprinted that we should do this and we should, should do that do. and we can't do this and we can't do that. And, oh, that's not good for them and this is bad for them. And I hope we have this common thread that we want our dogs to live a pleasurable life. Mm -hmm. And that is about us finding what are the rewards. And it's also about finding what are not the rewards. And that's probably more value to the dog. Actually, wearing this collar is not a reward for me. Jingling round the clock 24 hours a day has driven me up the wall <laughs> you know? but we dogs always wear collars oh. you know and the dog bed's always in this spot i really don't like to sleep there because i can't see what's going on uh -huh. yeah. i like to sleep at the bottom of the stairs where i can see the front door the stairs the kitchen all mm -hmm. at the same time mm -hmm. oh but we can't have a dog bed at the bottom of the stairs well nearby yeah, yeah. Oh, good. I'm so so glad because you're, you're talking to somebody who drags dog bags around <laughs> all the time. How about here? Yeah. How about here? My husband's saying, you know, you're spoiling the dog. No, I'm not. I'm just trying to find you. <laughs> How about this? Pet? When so, you've got upstairs beds and downstairs beds, you know, so upstairs we have one bed, downstairs we have, because when we sleep upstairs, it's not the same as sleeping downstairs. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, and I've got one collie that will sleep on the gravel, sleep under a hedge. Yeah. Do you want to come in? No. Uh, no, I'm all right out here. Oh, okay. It's cold, though. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Now, if I said to Merrick, would you like to sleep on the gravel? <laughs> <laughs> she would have just said, I'll, I'll, I'll pack my bags and find somebody who gives me bedding. Because <laughs> I'm not sleeping on the gravel. You know, so comfort. That is not comfortable for me. Yeah. I, I absolutely love trying to figure out where my, my collie is going to be half the time. Oh, there you are. Okay, cool. Yeah. Whereas my little Chihuahua guy, I mean, this is probably an overshare, but he loves sleeping on my little poofy menopause belly. Because <laughs> <laughs> you probably, you know, when we talk about lap dogs, where you, if you're sitting down, the most heat's coming off the top of your legs. Yeah. Yeah, the upper half of your legs. So of course they're going to sleep on your lap because it's like sleeping on a radiator. <laughs> yes. You know? But it's and windy. you can't go anywhere without waking him up. That's true. That's true. You know, so it, it depends on what's valuable to that dog. 
it might be, you know, so the, the collies often like to sleep outside because they can see the squirrels. Yes. Yeah. So they wonder, you know, at the moment it's cherry season. So we've got a lot of birds coming in for the uh, cherries and they think there's nothing more fun than, than bird chasing. Uh-huh. You know, so that's why they want to sleep where they can see it all happening. Mm-hmm. So much fun. Constantly changing. This is such a, this is going to be such a little adventure and travel and journey, I think, um, as we record these episodes in the next several weeks and mm. uh, and then mm. maybe if people dip into the course uh, uh, absolutely this you is... can just hear it with us talking about it oh, you know once you open up this world of rewards you know when you buy somebody a gift or you do something for them it's because you want to give them pleasure and when you're doing that for somebody that or some you know dog family member that you love you want to give them pleasure i mean the pet business has made a fortune out of us wanting to give dogs pleasure you know buy this food they'll love it give them this they'll love it you'll make your dog happy by doing you know we get guilted into buying all this stuff for the dogs this toy that i mean i look at your toy box and you go really how must i get conned into buying all this stuff (laughs) and it was never about the toy it was always about the game that you played with the toy it wasn't the toy itself and you could see you know so learning about the things that will be gifts for your dog. What an investment. Mm. What an investment. And knowing, oh, they're going to like this. Oh, I can't wait to pick Mm. this one up. Mm. (gasps) And scientifically, then be able to say, what's your evidence? I could see this. I saw that happening. And it happened again. Mm -hmm. It repeated itself. Ah, So much fun. (laughs) So much fun. So, uh, this is just a little teaser, and then we're going to um, dive a little bit more into the merging of the sciences, uh, et cetera. Mm. I mean, I, I was a little averse at first, but then I, like you, I read it, walked away, read it, walked away. How does it apply to me? Because it's all about me. Um, yeah, I just think you can't not uh, understand the sciences and just appreciate yeah, yeah. the work that's gone into it. Um, like you said, I can't. And I don't think it's... Um... Oh, yeah, I've got that, done it. No. You know, I don't think you can ever say you've got it and done it. I think it's continual, continual learning pathway as to the more we learn about it, the more we integrate it. And when you integrate it, you learn something from integrating it. Yes. You know, so even reading the short paper, I feel like saying, I mean, he's only a couple of hours away from us. <laughs> can I bring my dogs over and just show you this? Because dog trainers have been doing this for 40 years <laughs> and you're now telling us, this is why it's happening. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's almost the stuff that we want to be able to say to them superstitiously, we've done this for years. Here's some evidence for you. Here's the outcome of what you're talking about, where this works. Rather than just going, Oh yes, they must be right, got that, done it. You know, it is this integration. And if we get forty thousand people integrating it and doing it, then it's more right than we could ever imagine it was. Oh. Yes. And what a better mm. life for the dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it have your curiosity peak just a little bit? Well, then good. For more information and links to the articles, including the article on reward skills and the course about reward skills, are on the website, Learning About Dogs. Tell a friend, fellow trainer, or dog person and take a listen to the podcast. Give us a rating on Apple iTunes or your favorite podcast platform. Thanks for listening.